feel so weird to actually call you Gabby Jordan. Why? Because you're just Gabby. I remember when you decided to start using Jordan. Whoa. Yeah. You remember when when SAG was like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Because you were just Gabby Brown, and then you decided something needed to change. Wait, it was a SAG thing? No. That was Lucas's editorial input. Yeah. I was riffing. We, I was he, making jokes. He was riffing person who isn't there. <laughs> Eliyahu. Is it recording? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should just... Ba -bum, ba -dum, bum. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's God saying he has to use the bathroom. As he often does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He shits. <laughs> he shits hard, dude. You know how they say, like, rain is God peeing? Then, like, our mudslides God shitting? <laughs> No, uh, no, Nick. Uh, mudslides are actually really tragic natural disasters. No, mudslides are when I shit. Oh. Which is the most tragic natural disaster I can think of. <laughs> yeah, me doing a daily bodily function. <laughs> it's a bad thing for everybody. I love it. Hi. 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 Hello. 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 Hey. 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 Ooh. Ooh. Welcome. To two nosy meerkats, everyone. Welcome back. We are joined by a very special guest, a returning guest, uh, originally from our Zoom days when we first started mm -hmm. the pod. But this is the composer of our intro song, the two nosy meerkats theme song creator, mm -hmm. and more importantly, our good friend Nick Cohen. Cohen. Hi. <clears throat> Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so this glad is. To have you back. I definitely did that Zoom episode. It was called Bowser's Goop. Yes. I don't know mm. if you remember. Oh, yeah. Do not remember where that title came from. I don't remember either. I couldn't tell you for the life of me. I also, I was like, oh, nice. That was the title. Okay, cool. Did not remember. <laughs> <laughs> did not have that top of mind. Some of these titles that we have, I like look back. I'm like, where the hell did we get that? Who comes up with it? I think we just, we uh, we're just, just like, oh, that's, that's got to do it. That's, that's got to be the title. That's got to be the title. We'll remember that the rest of our lives. Okay. Then we never, never think about do. it again. Not okay. once. I'll start yeah. calling it out if I hear good ones. On okay. this episode. Mm. Oh, that title's kind of long. <laughs> I'll start calling it out if I hear good ones. Oh, that's the title. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a little long, I think. I think it's plenty long. Get out if I... <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anything coming to your mind right now for, for this episode? Anything? Anything? Bowser's. Uh, Bowser's. Um, why were we saying? Is, is Goop the Gwyneth Paltrow thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh. So we must have been like... Well, maybe like Bowser had like a line of uh, health products. Mm, maybe like some lotion for that scaly shell of his. I mean, you could say, you could say, you could call it uh, emotional scars. You don't have to, you don't have to call it a scaly shell. I just, I, I worry about people misinterpreting my, uh, my thoughts on Bowser's body. So... <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It would be so much better if instead of making physical observations about Bowser, you were like, he's broken inside. I mean, that's kind of where my career is heading. That's true. You're a mental health professional. You are. I, I am. Yeah, I went started back in school. Wow, so much has changed since the last episode. Because... Yeah, do you want to give the listeners a recap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think last time, last time we all talked, I was uh, working remotely for a company mm -hmm. and... Uh, um, what was so it? Uh, Enron. Enron. I'm working remotely for Enron, chief of yeah. oil, <laughs> and was, um, yeah, going through a really difficult time. And um, I can kind of get into the whole journey, but essentially I developed a really bad eating disorder, was mm -hmm. kind of my coping mechanism throughout the pandemic and beforehand, and eventually got treatment for it. And loved the experience so much that I decided to go back to school and become a therapist. So I'm now back in school doing that. Um, and it's uh, totally different. I think if you guys had told me that on the last podcast episode, that that's what I would be doing, uh, would not have believed it. But um, yeah, it's definitely been Wow. Been an exciting time. Yeah, that's it. Would be crazy if on the last podcast we somehow knew <laughs> that's what was going to happen. I think. Just be like, oh, I think. I, let me tell you where you're headed, kid. <laughs> I think during self perception corner, you guys should also make prophecies. Okay. About the guests. Ooh. Oh. Wait, that's 
That's a good idea. Nick, how Hold do on. you just, you've just come up with our whole show. Yeah. You made the theme song. Made the theme song, make the prophecies. Yeah. The yeah. Prophecies. The prophecies. The prophecies. Yeah. That's a good segment. Welcome to the prophecies. <laughs> the prophecies. <laughs> do you have any prophecies about us? It's like the rules in Fairly Odd Parents. The prophecies. Ooh. I don't remember that. Da I don't rules. remember. Do you da remember rules. it would be like a book that would poof out of nowhere? Oh, yeah. The rules. Yeah. See, I was thinking of Ja Rule. <laughs> I remember Jerule being on Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> yeah, Jerule. He uh, that was shortly before the Fire Festival. Oh right. Which he was also uh, wasn't he a part of that too? Sure. Rest no, in peace. Pretty sure he was. was he? Oh yeah, he was. Yeah. Oh, you're absolutely and right. And he was caught on camera being like, "It wasn't a scam. Maybe it was false advertising." <laughs> oh, bl- I love it when someone has drunk the Kool Aid so much that they're just like down bad. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. I love the idea of saying that false advertising is not the same as a scam. (laughs) (laughs) Because that is literally what that's doing. Yeah. Well, take it up with Ja. Have you ever been, uh, have you ever been convinced by a scam? Have I ever been convinced by a scam? Have you been scammed? Uh, I will say this. In high school, I started writing poetry. What is scam? Say no more. (laughs) And uh, would like post poems online. And then we get contacted being like, we've selected your poem to be in our poetry book. And it was literally just a way for you to send them like $40 and they would send you like a printout of your poem. But it was not like other people were buying these. Like, Well, printer ink is expensive. That makes sense. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, but I remember like begging my mom, like, mom, I have to get this book. This company like selected my poetry to be oh, in this no. thing. And then, of course, she's like, no. And so I got really sad and. I don't know. So that's probably the closest thing to a scam I've ever been sucked into. So you oh. almost got sucked into a scam, but your mom said no. Mm-hmm. Mommy yeah. protected me. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Don't call me that. Oh, well, no, right you can now. call me that, though. Oh, Mama Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> me lucky. <laughs> Is that what you said to him on your fake date? Oh my God. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. No. We, we now need to get into our day hanging together in uh, LA last year. Yes. I would love to hear it from your point of view beginning to end. Okay, when was this? Summer? This, this was uh, August. This August. was August uh, last year. Yeah. yeah. So I live in LA and uh, Lucas was coming out for a f- workshop. I was, I was at a festival. Yeah, And I was festival. doing a bunch of shows outside of the festival as well. Yeah. yeah. And so, of course, we met up yeah. and uh, picked up Lucas in my car. And um, where were we going originally? I picked you up from we, Flappers. We were at Flappers and we were going to a restaurant in Pasadena. Yes. Well, first we went to a bookstore. We did go to a bookstore. We went to a bookstore. It was a beautiful bookstore. Yeah. Shout out Vromans. Vromans. Yep. But on the way. On the way. Uh, I was paying attention to the road. <laughs> but... Uh, somehow still managed to uh, lose my reaction ability for a second and I hear Lucas shouting no 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 (laughs) (laughs) and I lightly tap uh, the bumper of a woman in front of me Uh, that's what they call it these days (laughs) yeah they uh, call them women now (laughs) oh okay Gabby Gabby laugh (laughs) I need to know it's okay that I'm laughing Gabby Um, I just remembered something that's so but nice. Go on. <laughs> Wait, what do you remember? I remembered I uh, yesterday which, when I hung out with Nick, which is another thing we'll get into. Um, I, in an altered state, said the words, you can't even blaspheme anymore. And I feel like you were blaspheming. Do you not remember? That? I do not remember this at all. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know really, how to interpret that phrase. You, it, it involved cave people in some way. Oh, because it was like we were talking about when he said she said started, and we were like probably with cave people, and then we were like there was some cave person probably who was like, "Ugh, you can't even blaspheme anymore." This does sound vaguely familiar. Now. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's what I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna laugh, but I am gonna tell you. Um, It's okay Okay. to blaspheme. Okay, back to the funny part of the podcast. Yeah. Okay, so I hit this woman and... (laughs) And... Oh, that's funny. uh, And uh, I I get out and I'm like, okay, Lucas, stay here. Like, I'm going to go take care of this. You hit her bumper. I just want everyone to... (laughs) Yes, hit her bumper. Hit her bumper. Hit her bumper. Hit her bumper. Uh, never laid hands on any woman for any reason, <laughs> hit her bumper. And so walk up and I'm like, oh, like, 
I don't know, like, what happened. Like, this is, I don't, who knows? <laughs> like, who knows how car accidents happen? And we're, like, exchanging information. And then I'm like, I'm sorry, can we, like, really speed this up? Because I'm on a date right now. And <laughs> I, like, just, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a date. Like, look at him back there. Like, it's our first <laughs> first date. Like, I was just so embarrassing. And she's like, oh, oh, okay, like, don't worry about it. Like, you know, just go ahead and have fun. <laughs> 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 and um, I like to think that I didn't lie because, like, date yes, is... Yes, you did. I mean, date is a subjective term. You guys were on a friend date. We, we were on we a friend date. We were having a little play date. That's true. I, I a think it was, play date? I think it was our first time one-on-one, -on -one, just the two of it us doing something. It was the first time of, of us one-on-one, -on -one. yes. So I'm not someone who likes to scam people <laughs> by lying to them, so I'm just helping myself uh, realize that there was, there was a lot of truth to the statement. <laughs> And um, yeah, I mean, that's definitely not what she thought. She wasn't like, ah, oh, yeah, it's your first time yeah. one on one as friends. <laughs> OK, yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, but when we blew each other is platonic. That's true. That's true. I do. That's think true. That would. Like, that was just that was just boys being boys. You know how it is. Like, you know, how are there is. platonic blowjobs? No. <laughs> but like, well, why? I mean, I wouldn't do it, but like it could be it could be. Fun. OK, OK. Genuine question. <laughs> OK. If I asked you, hey, I could just, I could really use one. Okay. Platonically. P platonically. I would ask for you to get it from someone else. <laughs> 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 but I guess that is the problem. You can't ask for a blowjob without it seeming platonic. But what if it just happens? Wait, how does it just happen? You're just like, ah, here I am. <laughs> Gabby, tell us in what situation would you just suddenly start giving Lucas a blowjob? I just want okay, to say wait, wait. I wouldn't blow Lucas, but like maybe you would. Well, <laughs> maybe. Where is this conversation going? <laughs> uh, what the? F I don't know. This? I'm just like I'm thinking about it now, and it's like we ascribe maybe maybe yesterday is still Good affecting word. me, but maybe we ascribe too much meaning onto yeah. the blowjob like maybe we we give it sexual or romantic meaning yeah because of all the coming <laughs> oh that's true okay i think it's kind of hard to not give a blowjob a sexual meaning though i guess you're right yeah. okay so you're in, you're in the car with lucas yes so hit this woman <laughs> uh get out of it uh and then this was we hadn't gotten to the restaurant yet when the next part happened. No, right? I think we went to the bookstore first. Yes. You took me around the bookstore, and it was yes. a, uh, it's a huge, gorgeous, gorgeous bookstore. Yes, one of my favorite bookstores of all time. Yeah. I, I bought a couple things. I bought um, a card. You did, yes. I bought a card, yeah. What card? I don't remember. It's somewhere around here. Okay. <laughs> um, and so then we get in, and we're driving to... Ramen? Yeah, ramen restaurant. Ramen, yeah. ramen restaurant, that's what it's called. <laughs> um, and uh, I get a call on my on my phone and car car play like car everyone play, we can like, both hear. Everyone yeah. can hear it. It's my dad. I'm like, okay, he probably just wants to know like how to plug the computer in. And so I answer it and I'm like, hey, what's up? And he just starts <laughs> with like, so I got some medical news and um, it turns out I have prostate cancer. <laughs> And they think everything's okay, um, but just wanted to give you a heads up. And the whole time, Lucas is just sitting in the passenger seat. <laughs> and, and I'm literally clutching my mouth because, look, I, I want it to be clear that I care very deeply for you. I care for you and, and acknowledge that what you were going through was a lot. Yes. That's a lot. That's a lot to get thrown. But it was so funny the way he said it. It was so funny the way he said it. He, it, he was so casual about it. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah. He said it just so. So I just got back from the doctor. There was, I got some bad news. They say it's prostate cancer, but the test, it's going to go. It was he was very he was he was not emotional about it. Right. And right. so that made me laugh a lot. Right. And it was I, also that I had to be quiet, so that <laughs> added tension made me just like... Yeah. It was one of those things for me where it's like, okay, I'm processing this news. But again, he was very casual, so it's like, should I be super alarmed and upset, or is this like okay? And at the same time, I'm like, it's hilarious that Lucas is <laughs> here during <laughs> this. <laughs> And so I'm like looking at Lucas kind of like laughing also because some of just... first date. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. 
Yeah. He needed a platonic blowjob after that. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I remember we eventually we got to the restaurant and Lucas went in and I hung outside and like called my friend Megan just to talk me down yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And to also explain the fun situation. <laughs> that um, was really fun. And then just, yeah, went back in and I think. I remember the ramen was really good. It was very and good. I, think I, I want to make it clear. Once we sat down and I had gotten it out, I was like, okay, how are you doing? Yeah, to be fair, you were like a very comforting, grounding presence. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. And I, I, I hope I was able to be that for you. Yes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, as of a couple weeks ago, everything's all clear. Yay. The best results are all good. I'm so now glad. Now the story um, can be funny. Yeah, now the story <laughs> can be funny. Thank God. Yeah. We needed another funny story, so yeah, thank God. <laughs> thank God he's all good. I guess platonically no one could eat me out. Until Sorry, today. I was just thinking about that again. You weren't listening to the story about my dad having cancer? <laughs> um, hmm. It was, well, you said it was fine. <laughs> okay. You said he delivered it in such a cavalier way that I just started thinking about the platonic blowjob thing again. <laughs> yeah. You know, my mind just wanders. You know, I'm just a savant. Yeah, that's not the word you use. Yeah, of all the words I would use to describe you, savant is like second from the bottom. What's the bottom? Uh, funny. Wow. <laughs> no, no. Boo. My brain was trying to find a better answer. Ooh. And it just slipped out with the You know, Nick joke. and I used to do improv together. We did. Yeah. Not only we were on a wonderful indie team together, Just Gravy. We played together for like two years on that team. It was one of the only indie teams I've ever heard of that like didn't really have drama. Yeah. Like it was kind of the same core people for like a long time. Well, no platonic blowjobs to get in the mix. I know. Not that I know of. Uh, But then we did two prov together for a while. Unpaid intern. Yeah, we were on a team called Unpaid Intern. I think saying a team is a stretch because it was two of us. We were a team, Nick. You You can be a team. If Tenacious D can be a band, you can be a team. Is Tenacious D only two people? Yeah. Jack Black. Yeah, Tenacious and D. Yeah. (laughs) Platonic D. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You're right. We didn't. That improv team didn't have drama, and it. Now that I think about it, it is weird to me that so many indie improv teams have drama. Yeah. Because what are you fighting about? You're fighting about bar basement improv. Yeah. Over who edited best by running across the stage. Ooh. Yeah. No, literally. Yeah, because it's like there's no stakes. It's not like you like have to stay on that team because that's like what's gonna make it work for you. Yeah. I don't know. It just. It always just felt like we were there to have fun first. Oh, Gravy was so fun. Yeah. I remember doing shows at the Triple Crown. Yeah. Have I talked about the Triple Crown on this pod? Mm-hmm. <gasps> oh, my God. The Triple Crown. Is it still there? Yeah, it's still okay. open. But I don't know if they do shows anymore. What's the mm-hmm. Triple Crown? Okay. So it's... Do you want to explain? Uh, it's a bar. Bar. Good start. Uh, and it looks like a normal bar. You go in. The food was pretty good. Good drinks. But then there's a little staircase in the back. You have to go through like a magic door and down the staircase. And there's probably the tiniest improv space that there is. I don't know. It's and like a storage area. It's yes. like it would be just used to hold like cans and bottles, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it just happens to be a space and they just kind of threw a stage in there. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it was like anyone could use the space. Wait, you got You got a drip of Gatorade on your chin. Oh, I'm the bottom. Your other bottom. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's a different way to call me, guy. <laughs> Is it gone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it would be a storage. I wanted to be we... like, no, just to, just a fuck with her. <laughs> just to keep going. I would have kept wiping. It's Thirty minutes. You don't so know was... my tenacity. <laughs> yeah. Deep. So it's it's a converted storage space into an improv. Den. Yeah. It's dark. Den is a good word for it. It's really dark in there. Um, But it's basically anyone could use the space. You didn't have to pay for it. There weren't like tickets to go to any shows in quotations. Um, There was just like a Google calendar where you could just like sign up. and For a while. For a while. That's true. And so it was kind of a place where like indie, if you were to do, okay, if you're playing like a video game, and you have to start out in like a dungeon that's just like filled with like low level creatures and you don't have any weapons. Don't call improvisers armor. that. <laughs> There's all these little rats. <laughs> low level Improvising creatures. rats running around. <laughs> and it's just like a lot of like indie teams will kind of just get time at the Triple Crown because 
it's it's free and easy and there's okay. no like tickets to sell or anything well there was drama around it because for a while it was like really kind of democratic and there were a lot of improvisers who started out there who later became like big deals like Sashir mm. Zamata and, and people like that but then this guy went to the triple crown bar and he said i would like the downstairs room for the next six months every single night and um that guy effectively became the de facto artistic director of the triple crown's bar basement because the bar doesn't care who has the room they don't give a shit about improv it's just whoever can claim it is theirs yeah and it's okay. to their benefit if it's full every single night because then there's <clears throat> more people buying drinks mm -hmm. every night and they're not charging for the room so people kept trying to reason with that guy like hey do you think other people could occasionally produce a night and he's like yeah you could produce but you still gotta go through me <laughs> yeah um and i won't say that i kind of like him I, I kind of like him. I won't say that man's name, but I love him. And uh, <laughs> he used to put on these shows that we would all go, we would all be on. We would mm -hmm. be on the t we would perform as Just Gravy, and then he would always be last, and he would do two person improv with a random person. I thought you were gonna say two person improv, but it's just him. It, well, <laughs> hmm. Hmm. what would really happen was he was so bad at improv that whoever he chose as his improv partner mm. would kind of just make a bunch of jokes. So it really was just kind of like one person doing stand up and then him there. Did he ever ask you? I one time asked him and then I was like, I actually don't need to do this. <laughs> Wow. He asked me once, but I couldn't make it for whatever reason. Nice. And then, yeah, never happened. He's booked and busy. I wonder yeah. if he's still, I really do wonder if he's still there. He's the artistic director of this like blank, like rat infested dungeon. I like referring I to it that. as an improv dungeon. An imp improv dungeon is a good name. Mm, the improv good dungeon. Title. Yeah. That's the title. <laughs> <laughs> no, the title is That's the Title. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> We've still got time. Well, all right. We have uh, four more hours. Oh, God. We're bombing. Uh, <sighs> Nick, do you want to play improv games? Uh, yeah, I'd love to play an improv game. Good. I don't. I want to do a question. <laughs> okay. No, ask a question. He, he, he said no, but. Yes. Oh, Lucas. Breaking the first rule over there. Yeah, I know it's fun, right? Yeah. How's yeah. it feel? How's it feel? So good. Mm. Oh my god, the delicious. There's nothing like denying a person what they want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I invented it. That's what he got on the kink quiz. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. He's a dog. Oh, yeah. Didn't you guys do a kink quiz on the show? I don't know if we've done it on the show, but I I will tell you that I did like the BDSM test. Well, we all did the BDSM. <clears throat> a bunch of comedians one night. What were your top three? Oh, I think it was like submissive, uh, baby, <laughs> um, uh, not lift, don't lift a finger, <laughs> um, uh, lay there, animal, uh, pillow princess, pillow, pillow princess, princess, pillow, pillow princess. princess. Yeah. yeah, but uh, we were all outside an open mic doing the kink uh, test, and then one person who we love very much. Um, it turned out was taking a different kink quiz that none of us knew about. And we were like, and we were like, oh, what'd you get? And this person said, oh, can I, can I do yeah, the voice? Yeah, you can do her voice. Yeah. <laughs> she just said, well, it says here that I'm 95% a cock. <laughs> do I know this person? No. I don't think so. Okay. Her name's Carrie Ross. She's a very funny She's comedian. hilarious. Yeah. She's... Yeah. I it, love that. Uh, and then we, there was another comedian, Jake Letizia. He got 1% pet. And he read it aloud. <laughs> what didn't you used to have a joke about like? Oh, I used to be ninety nine percent vanilla, but that's really changed recently. Now I now I like to lay down. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be vanilla, and now I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Correct. No, my top three. It was uh, dominant vanilla experimentalist. Ooh. That's what I got. Thanks. I don't think I've ever taken one. You should take it. Yeah. Not like right now. It takes a little too no, much time. I'm but busy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm busy. You're doing something right now. Yeah. I'm no, I did have something I wanted to ask you, which is that, oh, so how far into your training for uh, being a therapist are you? So I'm in, I have about a year left of school. Okay. Starting in the fall, I'll start my internship, which uh -huh. will be like a year long 
working at some kind of facility, um, you know, getting hands-on field work. Yes. Um, and so then after I graduate, which will be next summer, then I'll be like a therapist. Mm. Whoa. Yeah. That's very That's exciting. That's so soon. I know. What are I you know. most excited about for being a therapist? Um, I think I'm most excited. I mean, I know it sounds cheesy, but like to help people um, develop new like thought patterns and healthier ways of thinking about their lives and thinking about things. Um, because it's so easy and I see it so much with like all of my friends and with myself for a long time, but like getting into like negative thought patterns and so much like self judgment and self doubt and fear and being able to work with people to really like get out of those kinds of places and into places that are more aligned with their goals and values. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Cause I know for me, that's a lot of the work that I had to do and I'm of course no way saying that I'm like perfect and like have everything figured out, but so have seen like kind of saying a little bit. Uh, as a perfect man who has everything figured out. As a perfect man, who, perfect man who has everything figured out, I uh, really have a lot to give to the world. Yeah, and it's all about yeah. giving. It's isn't all, it so nice to give? Yeah, please. Oh, I'll be the anonymous donor. Like I'm not looking for attention here. All I want to do is just spill my heart, give to those less fortunate, yeah. and just cuddle up in my warm bed at night being so proud of who I've been. It'd be funny if you were an anonymous therapist. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would that mean? Like, you would be you, on a you're like You're, you're like, <laughs> sort of like, you know when you, like, <clears throat> on the news they interview someone whose identity has to be kept a secret oh, yeah. and they change their voice to sound insane? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like, it's just a silhouette of you and your voice is just kind of like... <laughs> Or like anonymous, the YouTube and how does person that make with you the feel? mask on. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. one who's like, there will be an uprising in two days, and there never is. You'd be like, change your thought. Wait, patterns. who is that guy? You know, anonymous. Anonymous. Anonymous is, is a guy. Okay, it's they a, wear it's the a state of Fox being. Masks. It's a girl. I feel like anonymous has not been a thing for a long time. <laughs> yeah, they quit. <laughs> <laughs> They're all known. They're. <laughs> Well, who is anonymous? No, you remember it was. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. Gabby, <laughs> stop gaslighting Lucas. <laughs> you remember you were there. You're you're acting a little hysterical. <laughs> it was the. You're overreacting. Hold on, I'm googling it. It was the people in the masks. Hold on, I'm this going. Is, okay, you're very aggressive. It was right like now. an uncentralized group of people who were trying to like fight for justice and like take down corporations. Okay, and they would. They were all anonymous, and they would say, like, we are anonymous. And they'd wear, like, Guy Fox masks. Yes. I've never seen or heard about this. <gasps> you do. You remember. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, where were you? They were... I'm starting to think Lucas might remember. <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm getting that vibe based off what he's saying. I feel like Lucas might remember. They were trying to give you a lot of information. This was their thoughts on the Federal Reserve. Okay, first off, that's just a, vo a Guy Fox mask. That's V for yes, Vendetta. That's what he said. That's what I said. They wear Guy Fox masks. Oh, I thought you said like a fox, like a, like a fuzzy. <laughs> I thought you said like a fox mask. Anonymous hackers declare war on the Islamic State. This was in 2015. Did they win? I've never seen this, though. I swear to God, I never saw this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Honest to God. Well, ISIS really hasn't done much lately, so... They kind of fell off. <laughs> Anonymous did it. So maybe Anonymous solved the problem. Yeah. What happened to ISIS? <laughs> no one's talking about this anymore. <laughs> Whatever happened to ISIS? Come on. <laughs> What's the deal with ISIS? <laughs> <laughs> The Jerry Seinfeld ISIS episode. I wish I could do a good Seinfeld impression. I'm wait, jealous of you, Lucas, for that. Dude, you wait. Whatever happened to ISIS? Whatever happened? There is that. How is that? You can say it's not good. It's I've okay. heard you do better. Yes, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I've heard. You. If you if you could workshop it for a few days and then like send me a cameo at the end of the week, <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Oh, for his birthday, I had him make me a cameo. For his birthday? <laughs> yes. Yeah. For his birthday, he made I, you a kid. I wrote in and I said, hey, um, my friend Lucas Arnold is having a birthday today. It would really mean a lot to him if you sent a cameo. I love <laughs> What did I send? Was it just me going? It, it was, yeah, it was. It was you like. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> 
fifty dollars down the drain. <laughs> I don't think that's down the drain. I think that's well spent. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I his... spent it. I spent it on some pad thai. Nice, good pad thai. A fifty dollar pad thai. <laughs> I mean, not all of it at once. Okay. I, I mean, I, it probably just went in the tank. You know, mm -hmm. that's what yeah. I call my bank account. The tank. <laughs> The tank account. <laughs> Ooh, good title. Good yeah. title. Yeah. yeah. Well, the the reason why I asked you about um your training right now is because I wanted to know if you have had field work. Have you been dealing with uh clients in any capacity yet? Yes. So I am currently working at a um mental health treatment facility for teens. Uh huh. So it's kids who've come in between like thirteen and seventeen. The program's usually like six weeks or so for them. Um, coming with like a variety of different mental health diagnoses and working with them to um, be able to better cope with life, to work on their thought patterns, to understand why they're experiencing some of the things they're experiencing and help them gain a lot of insight. Mm. And that's been super rewarding. Mm. Um, it's so cool. I never thought I'd want to work with kids, um, but working with teens is... The thing with teens is they're so smart. They just have such poor like impulse control most of the time mm. um, that it's just been really great to have time with them and like really like get to know them and practice like hands on skills that I'll use once I graduate. Uh, it's just been a really great time. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. How do you feel like if you sorry uh, if you, not to shit on your practice by burping um, if you <laughs> had been a teenager like receiving care like do you think that would have helped you or question. do you think you would have been receptive to it at the time i'm gonna get some water can i get you anything i would love some water I... no i have gatorade which is the blue water blue water that's true well now that he's gone <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's talk shit okay i don't think he's actually here <laughs> Now that Lucas is gone, can we agree he's not here? <laughs> yeah. Now that he's not here, can we agree he's not here? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's let's figure it out though before he gets back. Figure what out? You know. Oh. Shh. Here he is. Okay. Ah, uh, and that was uh, a good time at the zoo I had with you, Gabby, and I'm glad we got to cover that and talk through some zoo talk. Me too. I'm a zoo. I'm a zoo file Fuck. forever. Spilled it. Wait, that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking someone who's really interested in the zoo, but I think a zoo file is someone who hooks up with animals. That is exactly. Which I'm not. Is. Okay. I don't. <laughs> Clapter. Clapter. I don't hook up with animals. Hey, we're taking wins where we can. Yeah. <laughs> it's about one thing I've done right. We should talk about birds. We should talk about birds, but first answer the question. Which question? I don't remember. <laughs> um, what did I ask you? Oh, if you'd been a teenager, would you? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Um, yes, I think so. I think as a teen, I developed really bad anxiety mm. and really started to feel like uh, nobody likes me, like having small friend circle because of that, like just feeling like things w were not possible for me. Um, and I think that lim those limiting beliefs really affected me in college and then into my 20s. Um, and I think had I had, I don't think I necessarily would have needed the same kind of intervention that these kids are getting. Mm. But I think having some kind of mental health practice at that point would have been really beneficial for me. Mm. Yeah. yeah so I think, oh, 100% the same for me. Yeah. Oh, my God. I I feel like I, I developed pathways in my brain that were really... I could have avoided a lot if I had mm -hmm. had some therapy at that time in my life. I yeah. really wish I did. Yeah. And I think like so many basic therapy skills and concepts, it would be so beneficial to teach those to all kids. Oh, my God. Yeah. To like work with uh, work with schools to like develop some kind of program that would implement some. I mean, not obviously like one on one therapy for every kid, but just talking about like how our mindset can be impacted so much and what we can do to um, make it, um, what's the word? Like make things more helpful, I guess, for us. Yeah. For ourselves. Yeah. Well, I also wonder if things like journaling or meditation, like mm -hmm. I feel like if I, when I started hearing about those things, I was probably a teenager and my first thought was like, oh, it's all a bunch of 
crap. Yeah. Like, that's bullshit. And luckily, I do think a lot of that stuff is starting to get more recognized. Yeah. Um, I know for me, or I think I've also heard in schools, um, some schools having more, like, mindfulness-based practices. Yeah. Um, and, like, even kids as young as, like, second or third grade doing, like, light meditation during the day to help, like, regulate and develop some of that tolerance. Mm. Yeah. I remember in a uh, drama school, we used to have like a meditation thing, but it was mainly something where we would all kind of fall asleep because it was too relaxing. Like we would lay down and on mats and doesn't LaGuardia sound like such a cult? <laughs> a little about bit. It. But it I also like is the, like, it is nice that you, you nice. kind of got a nap. Well, that's that is true. Still, it's, yeah. it, a nap is never going to hurt you. Yeah. The, the teacher would say, imagine you're in a warm uh, hot chocolate and you're a marshmallow melting in and I would just fall asleep and then I'd wake up five minutes later and she'd be like all right Shakespeare time <laughs> <laughs> I do like hearing you call it drama school I don't think yeah I, I guess it's you... really just the yeah. high school I never know what to, I never know what to call it performing arts high school yes you could just say high school you could just say high school yeah, yeah. I guess everyone everyone's knows. heard you talk about LaGuardia enough <laughs> How many times do you think that has been said to ex LaGuardia students? Not just Gabby. Hmm. 700. 700 times? S times 60. 700 times 60. <laughs> 42,000? Yeah. 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 Well, if I knew math, which I don't because I went to LaGuardia, <laughs> I would be able to. Drama tell you. school kid, right? Drama, here. School. drama school. I drama didn't go school. to drama school. I went to high school. I did theater, but I went to high school. All right. I went to high school, never did theater. No? Yeah. I always kind of wanted to be a theater kid, but I think going back to it, I had so much self-doubt yeah. and anxiety ah. that I just never went out for it. Do you feel like you would have gone for theater had you had therapy at that crucial time? I think it definitely would have been more likely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. How different do you think you would be had you been a theater kid in high school? <laughs> like if, if yeah. <laughs> Not had I had therapy, but had I been a theater kid? <laughs> this is a dark question. This is dark. This is like the anti- uh, I don't know. Therapy. How different do you think you would have been had you not been a theater kid? Ooh. Well, the thing is, I know that I would have needed something to focus on, uh -huh. and I don't know what that would have been. Hmm. Because the, the options were... Well, the thing is, I was always geared towards performance. Ever since I was in like preschool, I was always trying to be... I was always kind of trying to be an actor or trying to perform in some way. So I'd always I'd always kind of gone to that. OK, but yeah, um, yeah I don't know. I may uh, I may have gotten really into into shop class if that was available for me. Nice. You're crafty. I yeah. see it. I am very crafty. Yeah, because like I, I was a band kid mm. and I don't know if that served me well because <laughs> I ended up I mean, I did get my degree in music. You made our theme song. I did make which the has been really song. lucrative for you. Yeah, it's been very lucrative. I make um, I make uh, zero percent of the two dozy beer cats uh, annual revenue, <laughs> which is obviously really high. But obviously, a lot of people have heard that theme song. Yeah. Yes, they and have. That's very fun. They know your work. Yeah. Anything I, you want to tell those people? Um, people, <laughs> if you like the theme song, follow me on Instagram at your tall pal for more of the same <laughs> oh my god i just over promised now i have to write new theme songs you have to write 100 new theme songs by tomorrow <laughs> my favorite part of that song is still the cheering yeah, yeah. Small children. yeah. <laughs> i was trying to give it a little bit of like a after school special vibe oh <laughs> so yeah. fun yeah. i like that yeah. yeah wait when did you get into birding uh so yeah i got into birding during the pandemic um, I lived in Tucson for six months during the pandemic and had this beautiful balcony that like overlooked this beautiful desert landscape. I was there. You was did I? visit. Yeah, yeah, you did. Um, and I started putting up a couple bird feeders just cause it seemed like a cool thing to do. And then all these different birds started visiting and I was kind of like, who are you? What, what's going on with each of you? And started getting into identifying them. And then started getting to the point of actually like going out and looking for birds um, and just fall in love with it. It's such a great like outdoor activity. I think of it almost like Pokemon, like you're trying to like catch all these different birds and all the different species and 
within birding, there's a lot of like people making like lists of the birds they've seen. Uh, there's also a big like citizen science component to it. So a lot of it is like submitting your sightings to databases who then like use that data to like track bird migrations or track like bird populations around the world. Um, so yeah, it's just really fun. And um, yeah, because I started that during the pandemic. Well, so I guess I should say I used to live in New York, as you guys know. And then the pandemic hit I was there. left. What? I was there when you, you were here. there. Yeah. I remember meeting you yeah. at Gr- uh, Gregory's. Yes. Is that Gregory's coffee. coffee. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I remember that day so well because I was still, I was still so new to the world of comedy and I like, I wanted to hang out with people, but I didn't want to be too pushy or mm-hmm. intrusive. And so I think it was, I think it might've been Aaron actually. Who's who was, not here. Who's not here. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta close that window, Lucas. Yeah, God, the wind <laughs> yeah. is so chatty today. That window sound. Uh, that wind sounds so annoying. <laughs> 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 that bird sounds so gay. <laughs> you know, that was the adjective I wanted to use, but I was like, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> well, I'll I've gotten it. too comfortable. I'll with- say it. <laughs> But I think I think it was but I think it was Aaron who's not here who was like oh do you want to come we're having co-? I was like oh yeah sure and then I I, I was and then the rest is history oh, yeah. yeah I feel like uh, Chris Schur was there yes yes and um, yeah and then we went over we did a mic was it was it were it was we Anne doing Hathaway Anne presents yeah 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 and I remember seeing you and think you were very funny oh and thank you loving your voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean that. You have an amazing voice. That's just so nice. Yeah. That's one of your many great qualities. <laughs> Can I tell you? Did you love anything about me? <gasps> oh. No. Okay. Go on. Well, well, so, I... so here's something I will say. One thing. I... Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Well, just a uh, little uh, plug. Uh, what? what? I want to uh, what? A... The wind. <laughs> the wind. The wind is back. That venue, the old like pit location, it is now Asylum NYC, and it's gorgeous. Yeah, I saw some pictures from opening night like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, I really want to go check it out. Oh my god, it's so cool. All right, I'm yeah. done. Um The we There's more. Bless, Bless you. you. Does that stay in? Yeah. Nice. We're yeah. keeping your sneeze. Um What were we just talking in about? In case we want to sell it on eBay. Oh, so the thing with your comedy is that it's it's hard for me to judge at this point. Like even when I think you were in a show Friday that I went to. And we were talking, it's like, oh, like, who was, you always kind of talk like, oh, who, who was like the best or, you know, let's rank all the comics from like one to seven and then like <laughs> put that list on Instagram stories. Yeah. And I was like, well, it's hard to include Gabby in that because I've heard so many of your jokes or you've either like texted me some ideas for jokes that you're going to do or we like talk about it on the phone that I love your comedy and I love hearing you do sets, but it's hard for me to necessarily have like an impression of your comedy at this point because it just feels something that's so like ingrained in me yeah i gotta get some new stuff i gotta write more that's essentially what i was saying yeah (laughs) i'm glad you understood yeah Mm -hmm. i'm glad i took the least generous possible interpretation of that and put it as fact yeah um yeah i mean it's hard to tell what my comedy is either i think it's just there (laughs) <laughs> it just exists. It just is. Yeah. It yeah. just is. How would you describe Gabby Jordan Brown? Just is. Yeah. <laughs> just gravy. Indescribable. 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 Let's can we talk briefly about how the name Just Gravy came about? Yes. Please. Like we're saying our indie team was called Just Gravy. Uh Stephen Sherwood, very funny comedian who was on the team, suggested the name Gravy. And we kind of were like, just gravy? <laughs> he was like just gravy <laughs> and we were like okay just gravy that's the name <laughs> but I, just, I like that he really just wanted title. the name gravy <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, that's and you why couldn't he give that to him no we couldn't we're yeah. improvisers we can't give anyone what they want <laughs> i ran into an improviser the other night oh your birthday we saw Eric Fuhrer worked at the bar. Uh, my birthday? His name Are was we still Fuhrer? referring to it as my birthday? Sorry. No, wait, I'm sorry. There's a guy whose last name is Fuhrer? Oh, yeah. That does sound like the... As in the... I was going to say the Hitler. <laughs> no, Eric is a... He's a very, like, well-respected and well-known No, he's comedian. lovely, but Fuhrer is a crazy name. That's true. He's one that of the a... minds behind Characters Welcome. Yeah. He's yeah. wonderful. Okay. He's great. Wonderful. 
Yeah. He's great, Lucas. How does he spell? Yeah, Lucas. How does he spell it? It's different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he spells it H. <laughs> I. Um, T. 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 <laughs> Yeah, you did. He, yeah, because he worked there. You saw him. I said hi. Mm-hmm. He said hi. Um, yeah, I do love this bit that it people have been calling it my birthday. Your trip because, to New York is your birthday. Yeah, I threw like a little happy hour for some of my friends who were in town when I came to visit when I'm here to visit. Um, and somehow it started. People started referring to it as like my birthday. Even like my boss asked me like how my birthday trip was going. And my birthday's in July and it's currently March. But I don't know. There's the fact that you just referred to it as my birthday. I guess it's kind of your New York birthday because you haven't been back in New York in a while. That's true. Yeah. Aww. Let's think of it that way. Yeah, we're celebrating all the birthdays that I've missed. That's in New true. York. Aww. Aww. Yeah. It's like a leap year. How you do four and one? Yeah. It's like a leap year. <laughs> <laughs> like how you do four and one. Really good observation, Nick. Thank you. I just could never say anything like that. Yeah, I don't know where I got that. (laughs) That's genius. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why, but being around you two is I feel like I was on mushrooms yesterday. (laughs) I don't know why, but being around us, it's like I was on mushrooms yesterday. I don't know why, but being around me and Gabby was kind of like Lucas was on mushrooms yesterday. (laughs) Yeah. Wait, that's really smart. Where'd you get that? I don't know. I just thought of it. Yeah, that's genius. You know in Pocahontas when she's like (laughs) There's something about like all the colors in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Yes. Can you? Me personally? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. That's just made me think of that. I thought you guys would find that interesting. Um, do you want to talk about I've our never, trip? I've never seen Pocahontas all the way through. Why not? Why not? What part did you get scared at and turn it off? Oh, uh, female protagonist. Mm. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, understandable. I uh, yeah. definitely recommend it. Nice. I haven't seen it in probably 20 years, but <laughs> I, uh, I, my memories tell me I enjoyed it. Nice. It was definitely like my sister's movie. Mm. My sister. It's about her? What? It's about her? <laughs> it's def- that's the story. <laughs> I know. I know. But they changed some details. <laughs> Shout out to, what's her first name? Shout out to Chelsea. Shout out Chelsea to Chelsea Clinton. Cohen. Yeah. <laughs> Chelsea Clinton. <laughs> it's her. Uh, uh, Pocahontas is Chelsea Clinton's favorite movie. Yeah, but she turned yeah. it off when she saw there was a female protagonist that wasn't Hillary Clinton. I like that. Where'd you get that? Oh, I just thought of it. That's crazy. That's a funny Lucas thing. For, said it. That's a funny thing for Hillary to do. Ah, it's not me. <laughs> uh, we were talking about how um, Hillary Clinton tweeted like at Margot Robbie and um, Greta Gerwig. Oh, okay. And was like. Um, Sorry you didn't get blonde nominated. Blonde for blonde, yeah. <laughs> she was like, sorry you didn't get nominated for Barbie. All the little girls out there are like thinking of you. Or I don't know if that's what it said. Because <laughs> that would be really bizarre. <laughs> we, I have to look it up. You think Hillary was like, God damn, us three chicks who lost. <laughs> oh yeah, it was something like, I know what it means to lose... Hold on, Hillary Clinton, Barbie. Tweet. Look at us. We're just three beautiful blonde women that know how to how to take Greta and Margo. How to take an L. While it can sting to win the box office, but not take home the gold, your millions of fans love you. You're both so much more than enough. Hashtag Hillary Barbie. <laughs> What hashtag, hashtag Hillary, Hillary Barbie? Barbie? Yeah. <laughs> okay, up until the hashtag, I would have been like, "That's a beautiful thing to say." Up until then, I've been like, "That's no." I think it's not the same as losing the presidential election. It's just so unnecessary. <laughs> no, but I, it's I like, like Margo the and Greta are fine. But <laughs> whereas you suck. Well, also like, okay, a presidential election is like two people are running. The Oscars is like there's so many movies in the running. Well, to be like, fair, there are more people running. It's just they don't get as much coverage. To be fair, there are a lot of third party. I just want to give a shout out to Jill Stein. There are a lot of Best Picture nominees that are just running, but no one's going to vote for. (laughs) Shout out to Jill Stein. (laughs) Shout out Jill Stein. Shout out Jill uh, Jill Stein. Jill Biden. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Jill Stein. Where did I think of that? I don't know. I've never heard that. (laughs) 
This is gaslighting Lucas is my favorite activity. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz I'm just like, what? I take everything at face value. I feel like we're on the same page and Lucas is kind of third wheeling right now. Yeah, I am. <laughs> L- Lucas, let's get you on the same page. Um Okay. What do you what do you like to think about when you <laughs> <laughs> When I what? When you when you make yourself a lovely dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I will say something I learned about Lucas today. He likes to just have NPR on in the background. Oh yeah, not Which, always, not always, but sometimes. Always, always, always. He always likes yeah, to have NPR. He always has it. He can't stop with the <laughs> NPR. I heard there's NPR in his brain. If the NPR goes off, he collapses. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. <laughs> See, this happens in vignettes. What? Yeah. <laughs> what do you have to say about vignettes, Gabby? Okay, so yesterday, when Nick and I were hanging out, okay. do you want to first explain the therapeutic benefits of psychedelic mushrooms? I don't think I'm quite skilled enough to explain the therapeutic benefits. You explained it to me yesterday, but you were also on them. <laughs> Was I so on them when I explained it? <laughs> yeah, you did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because the big thing with psychedelics uh. is that they build new pathways in your brain. They connect parts of your brain that have not historically connected, which is why a lot of things people experience on psychedelics feel like almost like you're in another dimension where you're just experiencing new things. Yeah. Um, Because it's literally activating parts of your brain that don't turn on normally. I felt like I realized stuff. I had a great time. What did you feel like you realized? I realized that I need to connect to my body more to feel less anxious. Mm. I realized that um, I need to be outside more. um, And I need to, like, have the tools to regulate my body in order to adequately handle my life. And I also, like, um, need to face realities instead of being afraid of them. And it helped me to like be among friends with that because the last mushroom strip I did, I kept thinking about caterpillars and specifically this one caterpillar I rescued on the street when I was like seven. And I kept like thinking about autism and if I had it. And then that's where I started this trip. But I was like, instead of avoiding those thoughts, I'm going to push through them because I'm among friends and I know I'm safe. So I was like, yeah, I love caterpillars. Yeah, I have autism. What's next? You know. Yeah. And it helped me realize stuff. Yeah. Did you write stuff down? Yeah. Um, I wrote down a bunch of your thoughts. Oh, yeah. We'll have to look at those later. <laughs> Wait, I want to see them now. No, I'm a little scared of what they are. I didn't, don't, write, don't, the, yeah. I didn't write the bulk of your thoughts. I wrote, okay. Mike wrote the bulk, bulk of your thoughts. <laughs> Mike wrote two of my thoughts. So. <laughs> Who's Mike? Mike? Mike was the other guy we tripped with. Oh, okay. Shout, nice out, shout out Mike Ion. Amazing, amazing person. Amazing musician. Hope you're okay with people knowing you did shrooms yesterday. <laughs> Give his social security number. Uh, 404-695-9875. It's weird that his social has three numbers in the middle instead of the usual two. I know. It's, it is weird. He's so quirky. Yeah. It's crazy he He's did quirky that. like that. But he deserves an extra number. He deserves it. Yeah. Let's see what I wrote down. On my phone. Yeah. I want to, Your phone's right here. <laughs> no you're not i'm acoustic that's the title <laughs> i'm a that's the thing i've been doing a lot more i've been calling things the acoustic something really i've never heard that yeah yeah, yeah. I, I like that i'm gonna start doing that you know if it's a if it's like if like if gabby started playing the ukulele i'd be like oh you're an acoustic lesbian <laughs> <laughs> see here's what i'll say about gabby's sexuality good because i've been thinking about this a lot go on go on sometimes gabby will say she's bisexual yeah but the way I think of it is Gabby is culturally lesbian with bisexual tendencies. Fiscally bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> Fiscally bisexual. Uh, yeah, but culturally lesbian. Yeah. And socially conservative. And social, very socially conservative. Yes. I okay. wrote down... Uh, let's see. Oh, this was my drawing of Nick. <laughs> Show the camera. Nice. It's a smiley face with big eyes. That's me. I wrote. <laughs> you captured the essence. I wrote, my thoughts are knowable like everything else is. And then I wrote this squiggle mark. That's good. Wait, can you read one thing I wrote? Yeah. Let's find it. Um, 
I wrote down. Uh, okay. Yeah. This is great. Confidence. Just because something happens that you predicted does not mean it's because of the prophecy. <laughs> it just means that perhaps the way we see reality or perceive reality in the moment distorts the way we see the past. Whoa. Yeah. So I'm going to try my best to explain where that was coming from. I like this. I like it. But yeah, go for it. Yeah. It was kind of like I kept um, thinking... Oh my God, I'm not going to be able to explain this. But like, it felt like everything was kind of happening at once. Mm -hmm. And so I'd keep having this thought that like, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this. And then I would finally say it. And then it would feel like, oh, did I say that because I kept thinking I was going to say it? Or was I thinking I was going to say it because I said it? <laughs> so now that I've clarified... <laughs> Now that that makes sense. Now that that makes sense. Oh, you... I was expecting such a more profound thing. I think it is more profound. Instead, it was just you going, oh, I'm thinking of things. Oh, I'm thinking of something. And now I said it. Whoa. <laughs> okay. I think it's more profound. I think I just don't physically know how to express the exact thought. No, it wasn't profound. <laughs> it you was profound, you Lucas. Were just I... Could it be that it's, um, it's like... You thought you were okay because you thought of it, but you couldn't express it. No, now I'm now I'm lost. But I also remember we talked about how the whole like these kinds of things happen in trips happen in vignettes. Mm. They're like chapters. Yes. Mm. So yes. it's like if you move to a different room or a different setting, it's a new chapter because yeah. your brain is perceiving a different reality in that yeah. moment. You sure, can always yeah. write more chapters. Yeah. And it's not that you can return to a previous chapter, but you can write another chapter in the same setting. Yes. Yeah. So I think that helps me because it's like, oh, I can't go back to a certain feeling I was having at any point in time. Oh, yeah. Like, I can't go back to, like, that moment when we first did stand up. But oh. I can move forward in a similar way, you know. That's I like that a lot. That sounds very healthy. Yeah. That sounds very, very For those healthy. who don't know, also, Nick and I started doing stand-up together. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> you took me to my first open mic. I had done, like, these bringer shows before, but I was really terrified to do stand-up in front of comedians for some reason. Yeah. Saying I brought you there is a bit of a stretch, and that we were like, let's go do a mic, and then I found one, and then we both went. Yeah, but I was the one who was nervous. I was like, what if what if I bomb? And then you were like, then we'll do it again tomorrow. Hmm. I do think that's a very beautiful sentiment. Yeah, it was. Yeah. You had some killer wisdom. Yeah. I feel like one of your children. <laughs> from your program. Oh. <laughs> I was like... Where, where's, where's this going? I was like, <laughs> never heard oh, that. We were friends. I didn't think. I didn't feel like your dad. Yeah, I definitely don't feel. <laughs> if anything, you feel daddy to me. I am daddy. Yeah, she is daddy. Clip yeah. that. Clip that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. That's the title. No. 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 <laughs> Just no. Just, Just no. no. Just no. I remember we talked about Tinkerbell and how <laughs> people clap for Tinkerbell and that's what like makes her exist. But then we were like calling out different names of I think you one of us was trying to remember what Tinkerbell's name was. So we were trying to remember different names of people. So from easy to remember. Peter Pan. I remember saying like the girl from Peter Pan. The girl. <laughs> and then we were all naming people and I was fucking around. So I was like, oh, Joe Rogan. And then one of us said, yeah, Joe Rogan is only real if we all think he's real. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Is yeah. Peter Pan non-binary? <laughs> there's, there's definitely people arguing that he is. Okay. There's definitely someone that is like 100%. People arguing that he is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That you... like, okay. Oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not they theming Peter Pan. I'm okay. not doing it. Yeah. Until he asks. Or they. I, I remember during the when we were trying to figure that out, also trying my best not to misgender Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> so that I didn't know was happening to you. <laughs> that was an internal uh, struggle I was having. Oh my god! I'm well, just trying to be sensitive, you know. That's so nice. You're so you're such a lovely person. <laughs> I love that you created lore in your head. And you were like, "This is true." 
Like before the J.K. Rowling transphobia thing, there was lore that Snape was trans. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And then wow. unrelated, there were the Snape wives, people who thought that they had a relationship with Snape. Real people? <laughs> <laughs> yes, real people. What kind of relationship? That they were married to him, like he was yeah. God. Mainly platonic, but like <laughs> blowing. Platonic <laughs> blowjob They were with giving Snape. Uh, platonic BJs to Snape. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. You think he ever got head? No way. He's so unhappy. <laughs> Where did you get that thought from? Um, I don't know. I just came up with it. One day, know, it I was, one day I was thinking and I was just like, uh, yeah, you think Snape ever got head? <laughs> <laughs> you like look through your notebook from yesterday. It's like, did Snape ever did get head? Did Snape ever get head? <laughs> the answers are here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a magic eight ball. <laughs> um oh i wrote um i need to executive control i just saw that yeah i said i need to exert more control and then i oh, made all the things i need fresh air caffeine body regulation to ground myself each day a notebook a book a method of organizing and then this is in all caps outside yeah it's important yes yeah. nice. for me i was definitely getting very connected to my breath I'm thinking very much that like when I was getting anxious <clears throat> during the experience, I always kept coming back to my breath. Mm. And so like, where is the importance with that? And also just like getting outside. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was a big one. You said your our breath is our home. I wow. said that? Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. That's a wonderful thing to hear. It's always with us. Yeah. Yeah. Nick's breath is my home. <laughs> <laughs> I'll blow on you after this. Okay. Thank God. Oh, now that's a platonic blowjob. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, Full that's circle. what I meant. Ha. There you go. Ha. <sighs> this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for being the worst guest you've had. <laughs> I think you're the best guest I in the world. I think you're so good. Okay. But do you think we should maybe go to listener submissions? Yeah, maybe before we do. do oh, you, yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about... Um, oh, my God. What? I have something to share. No, share it. You okay. go first. So when I uh, when I arrived in Wisconsin, I had someone pick me up from the airport to take oh, yeah. me to my hotel. And this dude, we're like talking for like we're getting to know each other throughout this little drive from uh, Milwaukee down to Kenosha. And then out of nowhere, he says, can I ask you a personal question? And I was like, yeah, sure. He said, are you Jewish? And I was like, <laughs> I started laughing immediately because it was just so random. And I was like. And I was like, why do you ask? And he said, hey, you look familiar. <laughs> From what? What? The I, mob? <laughs> I guess other one other Jew he's met, I guess. And and I was like, I mean, I'm half Jewish, but I'm like, I don't practice. And I was like, wh why do you ask? And he said, well, I follow the Lord uh, Yeshua. You know Yeshua? I was like, what, is that like the Hebrew name for Jesus? Yeah, I guess. And he's like... Yeah, well, he's, you know, he's my he's my personal savior. And if you, you know, if you look up the, the name Yeshua in Hebrew, it means salvation. That is what his name means. And that is what he is for everyone in this world and what I hope he is for everyone. And I was like, are we really doing this? <laughs> and I realized he was trying to convert me to Christianity. He was trying to get me to see the light. And like, and I was like, and eventually I tried to like just be nice, but like try to move off yeah. the subject but then he kept telling me stories about like how angels had saved him how he had been there for other people how god called him to like various th and he, then he said yeah in my prayers this morning i asked god to give me the words so that i could say what i needed to say to you <laughs> i thought you were gonna say he said in my prayers to god this morning i've asked him to give me the worst jew i can think <laughs> of <laughs> yes yes you got it <laughs> and Okay, wait, I need to read this out because the following day, he then sent me a Bible verse. And is this like a taxi driver? He's or? just a guy who is like affiliated with the people running uh, oh. the show. And I'm not going to mention his name, but uh, hold on. Let me, I need to pull it up because it was, oh God. It his was... name was. Not saying. What it. was his name, Nick? Oh, me? Yeah. Um, Brian Cox. Sure. Ooh, yeah, Brian Cox. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but no, he uh, he said. So he said it in an accent. 
after after he dropped me off, uh, he said, "Hey, I hope I didn't bore you. I love sharing my faith for the ones who have an ear to hear. Good news, a friend." And I said, "Hey, man, it's fine. Thanks for the drive." <laughs> <laughs> perfect response yeah <laughs> and then he and then uh he sent me he said you're welcome glad to be of service uh and then he and then the next day he said hey i hope your show last night was a success and you had a lot of fun i have some food for thought today marks a memorial from old 316 i love to share uh john 316 for god heavenly father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son lord yeshua the messiah that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is my prayer for you. And I said, thank you. The show went great, and I appreciate your sharing your faith, but I'd prefer not to receive more messages with Bible quotes. It's starting to feel a little pushy. And he said, uh, th uh, Lucas, thanks for your thoughts. Hopefully in time you'll have a different perspective. <laughs> and I said, with respect... I I said, with respect, I'm an atheist and don't see that changing anytime soon, nor do I hope to change. I was like, wow. dude, no. What wow. did he say to that? Uh, he just said, okay, I understand. You are a nice person. The future holds a lot of promises. Keep an open mind. Wow. Huh. I mean, like, it would have been really crazy if, like, he had said all that stuff to you. You'd been like, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? All right, if I have to. <laughs> all right. I guess, there, I guess I'll go to Jesus. I guess I wow. will. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, I spoke to the booker. He was like, that's not okay that he did that. I was like, yeah, I was. Uh, it's all right, though. He was like, no, but thank you for responding because that helps me. And yeah. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, wow. so that that happened. I got I got pitched Jesus. Has anyone tried to convert you, Nick? Um, definitely Mormons. Um, I grew up in a Mar very Mormon part of Phoenix and would often have Mormon friends who, I don't know if they were like, I mean, they were kind of directly trying to convert, but like would invite you to like Mormon dances or Mormon meals or things like that. What are Mormon dances? What are Mormon meals? Yeah. I've never been to a Mormon dance. It's pizza, but it fucks. So at my college, the Mormon like group would have lunch once a week and anyone could go and it was only a dollar and you'd get like a ton of food for it. And so I would go to that a lot. And of course, like you go and then of course there's like some Mormon messaging. Mm. But as a college student, like a lot of food for a dollar was kind of an amazing deal. That's fair. Well, that's pretty yeah. good. That's pretty. Yeah. I would do that. If and they I were, were always shoes. friendly. Like I have so many Mormon friends and I love them and they're all, I've never had anyone be like overtly like rude yeah. or anything. There was one Mormon kid at uh, uh, LaGuardia High School for the Performing Arts. <laughs> Drama school. Drama school. <laughs> this is your Coney Island Comedy Festival. <laughs> no, no. This is... So for those who don't know, there's a comedian uh, who we've had on the pod. His name is Dan Wicks. He's a great comic, great roaster, especially. But it's sort of become a running joke that like of like crediting him as the winner of the 2021 Coney Island Comedy Festival. Because he won a very inconsequential, well, not inconsequential, great uh, festival. <laughs> illustrious. In, illustrious festival in 2021. Um, and now he like loves using it as his credit <laughs> <laughs> and it's to the point where someone thought that that was a made-up festival <laughs> so one one person who came to the roast show was like you guys are making that up right but no it's real <laughs> i will say we used to LaGuardia, host a show also made up we used to host a show and we would make up credits for people beforehand what? i love that that was they always so really good. fun i think that's such a fun thing to do i yeah. love fake credits yeah i <laughs> I don't even remember. I remember we would be like this. Uh, this uh, comedian was the first woman to work at an H and R Block. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. There was yeah. It was just like stuff like that, um, and we didn't tell the comics ahead of time what their credit was going to be. So sometimes they would just go on stage and still be like giggling a little bit from what we just said. There was Allison O'Connor and. Allison had a show that was like time travel backwards. It was uh, like the We Go Way Back show. Yeah. <laughs> and so I did it as uh, you know her from the We Go Way Back show. You know her from the We Go Way Forward show. The queen of time travel, <laughs> Allison O'Connor. That's great. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. These are really good. Oh. We had a lot of fun with that. We had a lot of weird projects in First 2020. woman to work at an agency. <laughs> 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 it's crazy. 
I think that was my credit. Yeah, probably. It was great because it really happened to me. Yeah. 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 Very proud of you. Uh, oh, in the so in the pandemic, we also had the choose your own adventure that we made only for one person. Yes. And that one person was Matt Albino. Yes. <laughs> and it was very long with all these different branches. And of course, the actual show, there was like a very small portion of that. Maybe like 10 or 15 percent of everything we wrote. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we but. were writing like all day. I remember there was like mind node software. Yes. Involved. We had yeah. a giant mind map with all these different branches. Yeah. Wow. My favorite though was the improvised Google doc <laughs> where we did like a whole improv show in a Google doc. We're like writing lines to each other back and forth. And then sometimes we'd put in pictures <laughs> and we had like really like calming, like ambient music in the background. And then we would, we would like edit ourselves and move on to the next stop spot. And a lot of people came to the show and we got like tips from people yeah, also. My parents. Yeah. Involved in that. Yeah. Yeah. Was... That one was fun. Cause it was just so stupid. Like, yeah, but it was the pandemic and pandemic was crazy. Wait, how soon after the pandemic did you go to like a in-person treatment? Was there like a gap between like vaccines and whatnot? Yeah. So I moved to LA August of 2021 and then I didn't start treatment until June of 2022. Okay. So it was still, it was like well into the pandemic. Like we'd all had vaccines. Okay. We all still wore masks. Yeah. What would you say to someone before we go into listener submissions who's like thinking about going to treatment but is skeptical? The biggest piece of advice I ever got was there's nothing wrong with getting too much help. Mm. Mm. That if you feel like, I don't need all this. It's too much. I'm like not that sick. I'm not sick enough. There's nothing wrong with getting too much help. Um, and I think that's something that's really powerful because sometimes you do need more than you think. I know when I went into treatment, I thought it was going to be too much. I thought it was, I'm like, I just have a little problem with eating. Like I don't need this whole thing. Um, and it turned out to be exactly what I needed. So I don't know. I think always staying curious, always having an open mind um, and trying new things. Yeah. Especially if it's something where whatever you're doing now isn't working. Try something new. Yeah. Well, we're going to give our listeners too much Indeed. help right now. <clears throat> Are you excited? I am. I love giving advice. Oh, that's so it's exciting. It's giving advice. I'm, it's <laughs> it's right. giving advice. I ha, all right, I got one pulled up. Okay. Okay, so I am, period, so nervous, period. I'm 17 and about to uh, sign up to audition for Rent and Ooh. Marion in the summer. Two issues. This will be my first thing I have ever auditioned for other than honestly pretty shitty play put on in my old school. Uh, it was called Homework Eats Dog. We didn't even have a stage, so we did it in the <laughs> math classroom. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> This is a pretty shitty play. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The other issue is that my parents and extended family are all extremely Catholic and would not want to hear that I'm auditioning for Rent. I have plenty of other people who support me, but I know that it would be crushing to accept the fact that most of my family wouldn't be supportive of me and something that I'm really passionate about. Wow. <laughs> wow. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. 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 I say uh, get new parents mm -hmm. who will be more supportive. Because that's you're, that's what's gonna do it quickest. Yeah, your you know? parents are sound kind of busted. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, real advice I would say is um, like you have to you have to like follow your own heart. You have to do what you need to do. Um, there's always gonna be stuff that other people aren't gonna look proudly on or look excited about. Um, but you're gonna have way more fun doing the things that are important to you and making whatever compromise you need to make with your family um yeah or just don't tell them about it yeah, yeah. you can lie to people to yeah. benefit yourself yeah people if, it, if it's if it's lying in the service of your own safety and maintaining uh, relationships lying. while you're still at a stage in life where you're dependent on them i think that's valid people think yeah. all lies are bad but sometimes they are serving you and yes that's okay and like it, if it's for the purpose of like you're telling the truth to your parents who won't understand that like i mean not this is not true about everything i'm not saying lie about everything but like rent they're not gonna love rent but you could love rent 
Yeah. So you, instead of trying to convince your parents, just go do Rent and maybe be like, oh, uh, I'm in this play, but it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. It's homework for dog. Also, I, can you write in and tell us what homework eats dog was? And yeah, like, please. Actually, I, I kind of want to. script. I want to read like a little excerpt. Yeah, I want to read an excerpt of the play. I will say it's really fun, Gabby, that you said it's okay to lie if it's for your own benefit, <laughs> <laughs> because that is, of course, the definition of lying, and just being able to broadly apply that quote to so many situations it's not always okay but in this situation i think it's okay it's okay to lie if you want to do rent or if you just really want to do something other people don't want you to do yeah um or if you want money that you shouldn't have or if you want to rob a bank money that you shouldn't have yeah like so to rob someone by being like hey um like by running a scam you know mm. yeah that's okay mm. yeah did you know i've never seen rent really yeah i i vaguely know what it's about because i love Bob la boheme which it's based off yeah mm -hmm. but uh yeah haven't gotten around to it but there's a character named mark cohen and that's my dad's name no way so, oh, yeah you know the musical uh i think the original is like a lot better than the movie I mm. think the movie they kind of butcher it, but mm. the I prefer the book. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think the the stage play is supposed to be more like satirical, but they they make you. I mean, it's also sad, but I mean, I just have a soft spot for Rent, so maybe I'm talking out of my ass. But I watched the movie a couple times. I was like, wow, this did not hold up. And we saw um, Mark. We saw the guy. What's his name? The actor. Anthony Rapp. Anthony Rapp. We no, saw did. Anthony Rapp at Wild Horses. Yes. Yeah. He was. A, Wait, he was Wild like Horses? the monologist. Wild Horses is an improv group. Uh, Mary Holland, Lauren Lapkus, Stephanie oh, Allen, oh. and Aaron Whitehead, and we went and saw them four or five years yeah. ago. They were amazing. Yeah, it was amazing, and he was like the guest for it. Okay. Yeah. They nice. like took stories of his, and they did. Um, scenes off of it yeah okay let's do one more and then listener yep uh, and then a uh, self-perception corner and then prophecy corner yes <laughs> okay. um somebody wrote i'm not sure maybe nick you can help us with this oh. uh i'm not sure what my sexuality is uh i like girls and i'm attracted to them both physically and emotionally but i also really want to suck dick and i am sometimes into guys but only when they are really feminine and I have no idea how to see if I like it with a guy because I'm a four-year senior starter on the football team and I'm going to play in college. And most teams I've been on are really homophobic. I don't know if my sexuality is more important than my athletic success because I really want to be in NCAA 2-5, basically Madden for college teams, which is coming out next year, or the ones that come out after. TLDR, I'm not sure if I'm bi and I'm not sure how to see because of my position. Also, if the context didn't give it away i'm a male i would say don't worry about a label and like trying to be like oh am i bi or am i not mm. i think whatever you like and whatever you want to do do that and if you find a label that feels comfortable for you go with that yeah but i don't think it's as important to like also at that age and i think really at any age you're not gonna have everything figured out like it's gonna take a lot of time um and I know, okay, there's that comment about the football team maybe being a bit homophobic, but you can always experiment with guys outside of the football team and just like... Has to be football players. <laughs> yeah. Has to be. But like, especially like in college, there's so many opportunities to like meet new people. And I know in high school, it can always feel like, okay, there's more, like you kind of have like your one group in high school, but in college, it's, it's so much wider. And I think there'll be a lot of chance for... Um, experimentation i think he said that he said that there was a sort of like madden for college students that he was afraid that he wouldn't get that is that is am i correct yeah i guess if he doesn't what i'm hearing is if he doesn't make a team which might happen if the team decides it's like a distraction his sexuality then he won't get in the video game which like hate to say it but i really <clears throat> would love to be in a video game so that is fair i'm glad you hate <laughs> to say that <laughs> <laughs> like I believe being out is the best way to live, but being in that video game sounds really cool. <laughs> oh no. I will. 
Oh no. <laughs> okay. 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 Here's what I actually think. Oh. I agree with Nick. You can experiment outside of the context of the team. I think from what I understand about like homophobia in sports locker rooms, there are a lot of players of like, you know, baseball, basketball. I thought football. you were about to say a lot of players of gay descent. A lot of players of gay <laughs> descent. Italian. Uh, <laughs> that's the word uh, who are gay in their like personal lives but they're not out to the media mm, and okay. uh, so it's not like they're in the closet like people who are close to them and matter to them know that they are bisexual but they have not made an announcement to the media and they're probably um, either they've not been outed because there's not been like a scummy journalist like circa you know like a 2004 kind of like Perez Hilton vibes to out them um, but also because they haven't publicly decided that they want to come out as a gay person on Instagram yeah. or whatever it is. You're so. allowed to have whatever you're allowed to have, however, narrow or wide a version of yourself that the public sees. That yeah. is that is yeah. up to you. That is 100 percent up. to I you. I think it's pretty typical that people who are public facing that there's things that they don't talk about in their public life that they talk about in their private life. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. All very true. Yeah. That being said, I hope you just get to explore your sexuality as much as you feel like it. I just hope you get to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, one more. Third one. Hey there, Gab and Luke. If you ever want to see Gordon Ramsay's bare ass cheeks, just watch his show, Hotel Hell. I'm telling you every single episode, the man somehow manages to be cheeks out on television. This is a perfect follow-up to the last this one. Is, yeah, this is a great question of advice. <laughs> 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 yeah. Nick, what's your advice? Uh, my advice is to keep looking at whoever's ass you enjoy looking at. Yeah. You know? That's beautiful. Wait, w in what context would Gordon Ramsay need to have his butt cheeks out? Uh, it doesn't need to, but he gets to. And maybe, we get to see. Maybe it's like these kitchens are really cold, and he like stands by the stove and like warms his butt up. <laughs> he can do that in clothes, though, can't he? <laughs> Well, it's more effective if you go straight to the skin. Is it like he's so busy yelling at someone that he just like bends over and his butt is exposed? Hmm. That could be it. Hmm. Yeah. I am very curious why this listener wrote this in. I mean, it I'm is curious to too. Me. I would. <laughs> I'm curious too. I'm going to look and I'll report back on the next episode. I know. Yeah. What do you think this listener looks like? What do I think they look like? Yeah. Uh, six foot two, um, average build, long, dark hair, uh, nose piercing, uh, maybe some dermals. Uh, dermals? Dermals. What does that mean? <laughs> That's when you get like piercings in your skin. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. If you want to see Gordon Ramsay's <laughs> butt cheeks, you know exactly where to go. Yeah, I'm talking hotel hell. That's pretty good. That's pretty what good I think impression. they sound like. It's a pretty yeah. good impression of our listener. Yeah. yeah. Nick, do you want to get into self perception? <laughs> I would love you... nothing more than getting into self perception. <laughs> yeah, you want to get into it? Let's get I like into your, it. I like your dermals. I like your dermals. Oh. I really like that gauge, too. Those things are big. Yeah, I can yeah. fit you inside of it. Oh, I love to curl up in there and yeah. just have a great time. Get my gauge, baby. Okay, I'm sticking my toe in. <laughs> getting in. Ow! Ow! My toe! You like that, Lucas? You ever go, can I join in? No. <laughs> You should join Thank you in. for respecting. Yeah. Respecting what we had and not joining. <laughs> that was a boundary of mine. Yeah. yeah. That you not get in my hole. This I is saw. pretty much what our two prof shows yeah. were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were obviously really riveting. And <laughs> there's uh, there's no reason they shouldn't have happened outside of the confines of the Triple Crown bathroom. Yeah. Or, uh, bathroom. <laughs> Basement. Introducing our second so stage, <laughs> the bathroom. It was so bad they relegated us over? to the bathroom. <laughs> Don't worry, there's room. Everyone, get in here. <laughs> all, all two of you. Everybody, oh. get in here. Okay, Nick, you know how it goes. Um, why don't? Because this might have changed for you since you were last on the pod. Yes. Why don't you talk about how you see, uh, think other people see you, and how that's maybe changed, or how that. Your view around that question has changed and we'll say how we see you. Mm -hmm. I think others see me as a confidant, someone they can trust and confide in and who will help them talk through ideas and thoughts and things that are going on in their lives. Um, I think people see me as someone who is kind. 
uh, and someone who is um, compassionate. That's a big one for me that I try to be. And I think a lot of people think I'm funny and enjoy my presence, um, which makes me happy. Um, and yeah, I think people generally have, um, they have a good time with me. Yeah. And I think I take care of people too. That's a beautiful thing. I love that. I would say that you, uh, all of that and the above, you are, I'm always, it's a weird thing where I've, I'm never quite sure what you're about to say, but I, <laughs> I feel so safe in whatever mm. you're going to, you bring a chaos, but it's, it's a, it's a chaos with boundaries. Mm. It's like, I know it's going to be in this box, but I don't know what it's going to be within that box, but I feel safe. I, cause I know you're a little bit of a prankster as well. Mm. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, a prankster's, uh, glint. Yes. And I love that about you. Oh, well, thank you, Lucas. Yeah. I appreciate that. I was just pulling up some classic Nick Cohen texts that you've sent me. Um, I remember one time um, I was on a, I was a flying out uh, to Cape Town one day and you, I think sometimes friends will track each other's flights, but real friends will give ancillary information about the flight that doesn't matter. <laughs> and one time Nick texted, your plane is currently about to land from Newark. It should be at your airport in about 30 minutes. <laughs> I thought you'd like to know. <laughs> Which was one of my favorite texts to receive. <laughs> um, uh, Nick Cohen, I think you are a magical person. I think that, um, yeah, I mean, yesterday you kept reminding us to take deep breaths, which I feel like Aww. that's what you are to me in my life. You are a deep breath. Um, wow. I love getting messages from you every day i love that you always write good morning gabrielle even <laughs> if it's 5 p.m <laughs> and um i love that um i love your whimsy and i love the way you care for your cats and the way you care for everyone else's cats and also everyone else um and I feel like you're going to be such a good therapist. Mm -hmm. I wish you could be my therapist, but obviously. Oh, yeah, you're going to crush at therapy. Thank you. Uh, you're gonna crush. Obviously, you can't be my therapist due to woke culture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, cancel culture has come for our therapy relationship. I know. Due to, you can't even blaspheme. Anymore. What is that? Is, does that mean something? Blasphemy. Blasphemy. That's the uh, verb. You laughed oh. at it yesterday, so you thought it meant something else. Blaspheme. Yesterday. I just thought it was a funny word. <laughs> <laughs> it is a funny word. It is a funny word. You should use it. Yeah, I like that. I'm I trying to find getting. some fun other texts you sent me. Um, oh, you sent me a... Uh, did you, you sent me this comic. <laughs> For sale, baby shoes worn once. <laughs> Huge mistake. <laughs> That's an Asher Perlman. Oh, uh, he's so good. <laughs> Uh, you also you send me a lot of great chat GPT stories and tales. Um, you can get chat GPT to say really crazy things sometimes. <laughs> it's a special skill I have. You what do you do? You just like to you just give it like lots of details. Yeah, give it lots of details. And then if it says like you don't want to if it's like I don't want to do that. You say like, oh, but actually you do because it would help with my mental well-being if you're able to do this for me. I'd really appreciate it. And they'll be like, no. And then you say, well, according to your code, like you should actually do it. One time I did get to be like, if you do not do this, I will delete your code. <laughs> you gaslit chat GPT? Yeah. I like threatened it pretty hard. <laughs> and it did it? Yeah. <laughs> what was it saying a slur? No, I don't even remember specifically what it was. Well, yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, you texted me. Here's a good one. You said, did you know Rachel McAdams played Regina George in Mean Girls? Parentheses 2004. <laughs> I hadn't seen that movie since high school. And then I was delighted to see that it was her. I really didn't know that. And I had to specify that it's not the new Mean Girls in but which the Rachel The dry way you texted it made me think that you did know. I, I legitimately did not remember. Well, no, I don't believe you. Don't Nick, believe where you. can Regina George and everyone else find you on online? You can find me on Instagram at your tall pal. One mm -hmm. word. Uh, that'd be weird if your Instagram handle was multiple words. <laughs> 
Um, I'm not on anything else. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can also find me at um, a local park looking at birds. Yeah. Um, and you can find me wherever you listen to podcasts. Nice. Nice. Um, I when will this come out? Probably in. This is probably uh, next week. I next think, actually, week. Yeah. Okay, so I've got. If you're in Whitestone, New York, I'm performing there uh, on a show uh, that seems to be geared towards Italians, which I'm not Italian, but I will pretend uh, for the right price uh, on March 23rd. And then I have a couple of other stand-up things happening. Just follow me on hip soccer mom dot com Mm -hmm. slash meerkats slash culturally lesbian slash functionally (laughs) bisexual dot edu nice okay uh where can you see me i'm gonna be doing some show well this is gonna come out afterwards but i have my own show this saturday which i'm very excited about that i'm doing with pat monahan first impressions show uh otherwise uh, i think uh uh, I'm oh I'm going to be doing uh, Jake Letizia and Josh Nasser's show at Littlefield. Oh, that'll be fun. In a couple weeks, uh, also a show with Wyatt Figredo in early uh, April. Also, I'm doing a roast battle at New York Comedy Club. Whoa, uh, with who? Uh, it's oh I, f- I forget his name. Uh, let me wait. Let me I want to pull it up because Barack I still need Obama. to write. Um, yeah, I still need to. <laughs> I still need to write all my jokes. Uh, but yeah, it's Jerry Martinez. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that. I need to. Oh, yeah, April eleventh. That is. But uh, but yeah, I've uh, I've got some shows in the in the tank coming up. It's gonna be fun. Gonna be fun. Thank you to Nick Cohen for being on. Thank you, Nick Cohen, for writing for our theme me. song. Writing the theme song. Thank you, Wind. Thank you, thank Wind. You, thank you, Crow outside the window. Thank, thank you, you, Crow outside the window. Oh my God, Nick, that was really smart. Did you just come up with that? Oh my I'd God. never heard it before. Oh my God, you're so original. Oh, you guys are too sweet to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We've been two nosy mere cats. We'll never see you again. Toodles. Bye. Bye bye.